Hey guys, I'm Pixel Dan, and this is a review of the Nickelodeon Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutations Pet Turtle to Ninja Turtles. That's right, if you are a longtime fan of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, then this concept is probably a familiar one to you. Because this transforming feature was seen in the original Ninja Turtles toy line as well as the 2003 toy line. And now here it is coming back again for the Nick Turtles line. So let's go ahead and check these guys out. Now as you can see the four turtles come on some new style blister card packaging. The colors are much brighter on these, much more green and yellow, and they all feature their individual turtle images straight out of the cartoon series in the upper right hand corner of the blister bubble. These are also a larger scale blister cards because the figures inside are a little bit bigger than your standard basic action figure. The blister bubble fully showcases the figures within and also shows you the one, two, three steps in transforming your pet turtle into a ninja turtle. And when you flip that around to the backside, you get the same transforming little picture there, as well as showing you the other turtles available in this lineup. And down below that, you even get the origin story of the turtles, which is kind of a neat throwback to the original Ninja Turtle packages. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at all four turtles outside of the packaging here. Now, like I mentioned when talking about the blister cards, these figures are a little bit larger than your standard basic action figures. These guys are more of a deluxe figure and they stand at about the six inch mark, whereas the other figures are in more of the five inch scale. So as you can see, these new figures here are much taller than your basic Ninja Turtles. In addition to that, these guys will tower over all of your villains. So they're not really to scale with all the other figures in the lineup. One of the other unique things about these guys that really makes them stand out are their massive torsos, but that's because of that transforming action feature with the opening shell there. And like I said, if you had any of these in the past, it's a very similar build to that. If you're new to it, I'll get to all of that transforming feature in just a bit. But first, let's take a look at the turtles themselves. Now, all of the turtles do kind of share the basic body design there. Um, their torsos themselves are all individually sculpted because they have the different belts to match up there, but the arms and the legs are the same on all four turtles. And then, of course, they do have their own unique head sculpts there, uh, each of them doing a pretty good job of capturing the correct uh, style of each turtle, except for maybe Raphael. He's awfully happy. And also, it looks a little strange because his bandana is sticking straight up in the air, so... I don't know, I'm not really a fan of his head sculpt, but the other three do look like their respective turtles. They all feature the little eye pupils there, so they don't just have the whited out eyes. Um, and all of their skin colors do kind of match exactly what we've seen with all the other basic turtles, so it's varying in different shades of green there. And for the most part, the paint jobs all seem nice and clean on there, though they are basic, which is very similar to all the other figures in this lineup. So we do have the uh, different colors on the back of the shell and the front of the shell. All of the belts are painted there, and then their respective colored bandanas, along with their elbow pads and their knee pads. But the the skin tone itself is all just that one shade of green, just uh, different shades for each figure, but there's no parent variance in there. So there's no shading or anything like that is basically what I'm trying to say. So the figures look a little wonky and it's because of that transforming feature that I talked about. That's why they look a little bit bulkier than normal. However, each of the turtles do also come with their own signature weapon because you can't have a Ninja Turtle without their weapons. So, Raph has his size, Donatello has his bow staff, uh, Leonardo has his katana blades, and Michelangelo has his nunchucks. And one of the things I really like about the weapons is they're fully painted this time. So all of the handles do have matching colors to the respective turtle, um, except for Donatello who just has the white wraps on the bow staff, and that looks really nice. Now the only downside I really have is with Michelangelo's nunchucks because once again the chains are just part of the plastic sculpt and it's actually a very stiff plastic on these so bending them will definitely give you stress marks and might actually even snap the chain so be very careful with that. But I do like the fully painted weapons and actually if you wanted to you could put those in the hands of your basic turtles because the weapon sizes actually match the basic turtles. Um, so they're not too big for them and it looks kind of nice having painted weapons in their hands as opposed just to the straight brown or silver ones. Alright, so let's go ahead and scope out the articulation on these guys. The head's on a ball joint so it can look left and right and move slightly up and down there. You get the same kind of ball joints at the shoulders. Uh, you can see the arms don't go upwards very well but they do move forwards and backwards roll all the way around. 
You got swivels at the elbow as well as an elbow bend. You can actually bend the uh, forearm there forwards and backwards. Uh, you also have swivels at the wrist on these guys. Now there's no torso articulation of course because of that included action feature, but the thighs have nice ball joints there and you can see that allows for a wide range of movement in the legs, which again will play into the action feature. You got swivels at the knee as well as a knee joint behind the knee pad there. You also have a swivel at the ankle as well as a hinge joint at the ankle, so the foot has a really great range of motion. So these guys have a bit more articulation than we normally see on Ninja Turtles action figures, um, which should allow you to pose the guys around a little bit more. However, they will still look a little awkward in some poses because of this extra large torso on the figure. In fact, most of the reason for this articulation all being there is for that mutation action feature. All right, so let me show you how the mutation works on these turtles. The first thing you want to do is pull open the shell in the back, and they can be locked in place pretty tight, so you want to give it a good little tug there. Uh, it might help to kind of squeeze the sides there, but it pulls open. You notice the sides are very soft and flimsy there. And when you look on the inside, you see all the little parts that we're going to fold out. So you got these little legs down here on the bottom of the shell. You just kind of rotate those around there just like that. And these are going to be the back legs on the turtle. And then down here, we actually have a little turtle tail right there, which we're going to rotate out the bottom of the shell just like that. And then the last thing we need to do is rotate this head around just like that. We switch it, so we, we pull it out on that peg, we rotate it, then we push the peg shut. So that locks the standard Ninja Turtle head inside and we get the baby turtle on the top. Then we were gonna take these arms, which we no longer need, and these are gonna actually fold down inside of the back of the shell. So you wanna find the best way to kind of make these fold around there and tuck them inside the shell so that they fit. You might have to kind of play around with them just a little bit there to get them to fit inside. Then the only thing you need to do is close that turtle shell. You wanna make sure that it clips in place. Make sure those ball joints are kind of covered up there. And you got these little, uh, the flimsy side pieces that kind of go under this little lip here in the shell. So just like that. It's a very simple transformation. And if any of you have had any of the vintage ones, um, it's very much uh, the same as those. So the final step, we actually rotate the back legs of the Ninja Turtle forward, which become the front legs on our baby turtle. See, and then we got these little guys here as his back legs. And we got the little tail poking out. And this, as goofy as it may look, is our baby turtle. Admittedly, the pet turtle form is rather odd, but I always felt the same way about the vintage ones too. They were kind of goofy looking. The way the back legs come up to make the front legs and then you have those tiny little back legs are just really out of proportion. But it is kind of a neat concept, the whole transforming thing. It's just one that I always thought was a little strange. But it's neat to see that it's still executed exactly the same on these current figures as it was on the vintage figures. And plus, you can do this with them. Ah! Alright guys, it's comparison time. Now unfortunately I don't have one of the vintage mutating turtles in my collection currently, but I do have some from the 2003 line, and like I've been saying, this is exactly the same as all of the other versions. The mutations work exactly the same, so this way you can see what they look like side by side with those older counterparts, and kind of see how it's almost just like a larger version of the exact same thing done with the modern Nickelodeon style. So there you go, my friends. There is a look at the brand new Pet Turtle to Ninja Turtle Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles mutations figures. These are definitely an interesting concept. Even when I was a little kid, I thought these were kind of funny looking, to be perfectly honest. They look really silly in their turtle form. Um, and... You know, they just look kind of bulky in their Ninja Turtle form. So these are definitely more meant for the kids rather than the collectors. The play value with them is kind of neat, being able to transform them back and forth. Um, so a lot of kids might actually really like this. I know that these were quite popular when I was a kid, so, so it makes perfect sense for playmates to want to bring this back for the new toy line. So the TMNT Mutations figures are supposed to start hitting store shelves in January 2015. However, some of them are starting to hit store shelves right now. So happy hunting, my friends, and until next time.